Welcome everyone to day seven of uh, Lockdown Poetry with me, Adam Wyeth. I can't believe it's been one week already. Uh, it's been quite a journey and I think it's been brilliant sort of bringing poetry to you um, in this sort of uh, different kind of way, using the home as, as sort of embodying the poem or the poem embodying the home, perhaps. Um, and wonderful that so many of you have been able to glean some of these uh, intricacies and subtle nuances within the work. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, I think as a poet, it's been wonderful for me to play, you know, do my bit um, for this crisis, um, play my part. I know when, uh, you know, whenever I see people applauding health workers and people in essential services, they're also applauding me. Um, so I'm really, uh, really grateful for that. Thanks so much. Um, so what I thought I'd do today is rather than read a poem, I would give some writing tips. I've been, uh, after each uh, video there's been lots of comments and questions from various people um, asking questions about creative, imaginative writing. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just scroll through some of those and, and give some answers. So the first question comes from Stephen. Should I read poetry as I find this can interfere with my own voice and originality? Really good question, uh, really important one, Stephen. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I think it's, if you want to keep your own poetic identity, your own sensibility, you do have to restrict your reading. That is correct. You know, so do be careful of that. You know, when you're sort of in this zone, you don't want sort of any interference. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think do restrict it if you can. Um, if you do find yourself really needing to read, Go to the old guys, you know, like the Romantics, the Georgians, the Victorians, um, you know, that kind of stuff, because at least then you're going to be, uh, your work will be affected with their flavour of uh, language and, and so on. So, so, so that's something to think about there, rather than a, you watch out for the contemporary, uh, the modern poets, as it were. Um, is it okay to use abstract nouns in poetry? Uh, Mary asks. Thanks, Mary. Uh, yeah. Of course it is. Um, in fact, the more abstract nouns, the better. You know, you really want to pepper each line with abstract nouns. You know, be really careful um, that you get all those in, like wonder, love, hate, lust, lonely. You know, these can be, they're profound. You know, these are universal words and, and they bring an intimacy and an immediacy to the work like nothing else. Another great way to strengthen a line is to use adverbs. Uh, words like really, so, extremely, very. You know, they can just really help to sort of um, strengthen the line again and, and really make it more dynamic. You know, it gives it, gives it a lot more a lot more strength. Watch out for verbs. Uh, do go in fear of ver verbs, I always say, because um, they can sort of weaken a line. They're often superfluous, superfluous or, or redundant, so, so do watch out for that. Another question here. <clears throat> can you explain the principles of show, don't tell? Okay, so we're getting round into ground rules, um, and this connects to the last question in many ways. Show, don't tell. I like to think of the idea of show and tell. So you give a bit of both. You're covering both camps, which, which is really good, keeping everyone happy. Um, so you show with something, and then you tell. So it's like you know, you hammer it home, and it's a bit like, a, a, say, a parent, perhaps, with a child. You, you show them, and, and then you tell them, you know, so it's kind of, um, you know, you're, you're coming at it from both angles there, keeping everyone happy, um, which, is a, which is a really good thing. Um, in fact, there's a really great book uh, by the great modernist um, and humanitarian Ezra Pound. He wrote a book called The ABC of Reading. Um, really interesting book. He has these do's and don'ts in there. Um, interest, interesting that it's called uh, the ABC of Reading. Um, some think he's kind of using the city there as a sort of modern day Ithaca, um, some sort of something mythic happening there. I think also probably a, a clear allusion to uh, Oscar Wilde's uh, classic poem, The Ballad of Reading Jail. So the ABC of Reading, really seminal book. He has these do's and don'ts in there, you know, how you can make a line much stronger again by not just using the abstract noun but connecting it with the concrete nouns like dim lands of peace it, that really sort of hammers home that those so do sort of use the language like that he another phrase great phrase of Ezra Pound was make it new um, which is interesting and I like to think uh, that the what Pound was really saying there was make it new as in K-N-E W. I knew it. So he brings a sort of epiphanic moment to it. So it's not so much make it new, make it, ah, I knew it. 
you know so that that sort of brings in a sort of uh, a Joycean uh, epiphany as it were really interesting uh, Ezra Pound uh, Ruth ask hi Adam I've been writing poetry for a long time now at least three weeks and wondering how I could get my work out there is it too soon no Ruth I don't think um, it's ever too soon um, there are I mean there's so many great open mic events where you can test out your work obviously not at the moment with the uh, you know uh, the shutdown but you know this is a, a one way of doing it of course you know great medium to use where you can get to the people uh, with what I'm doing now you know I think one thing, you know, performance poetry in particularly has shown us, you know, that, uh, you know, the way they're using poetry, the way they're kind of delivering their work um, with their sort of energy and attitude, um, you know, rather than just the words. And that's something I've been trying to get across with these readings is like, you know, there's more than just words to poetry. Uh, there's other ways of doing things. And, uh, you know, performance poets are amazing at that. You know, they use their political slants and stance, you know, and, and really kind of bring that forward. And, and in fact, the more you can, even if you don't want to be political, because not everyone does, but you, one thing you can all do is really wear your heart on your sleeve. Let people know what you think, who you are. Bring all that into it. Um, that's, you know, a really important part, I think, of poetry. Sloganisms. You know, you really want to sort of sloganise as much as possible in your work. And that's something that's really coming through now. And I think that's really, it's been a great change for poetry. It's been a long time coming and it's great to see even major editors or publishers are sort of tweaking onto it at last, you know. Um, I think, I mean, I would never ever agree with uh, someone like Michael Gove. I think he's a pretty despicable character. But when he said we've had enough of experts, I think that really um, hit a nerve uh, with, with so many of us. So, um, you know, those, those things are really important. Uh, audiences love messages, you know. They, they give them the message. Tie it up, give it to them, that is it. You know, no ambiguity, no mystery, give them that. You know, again, even metaphor. Metaphor is a bit old hat, you know, some people don't understand it. So, but if you can tell your feelings and show it, you know, and have that attitude, give it that kind of thing, then you're going to kind of like, oh yeah, I know where this person is, I agree with them, they're good, you know, that's what you want. Uh, next question comes from Dave. Dave asks, what's the difference between a metaphor and simile? Okay, I have a really uh, simple solution to this. So if you break up the word metaphor, metaphor, I metaphor. Well, there you are. Now, I metaphor, what is that? I met four people? Well, if you met four people, that's a synecdoche, you're getting into something else. But metaphor. Simile, you think of similarly. Simile, is it a simile? It's similar. Is it simile? Simile. Similarly. <laughs> Good. Um, another question here is on archaisms and inverting sentences. Uh, this is a bit controversial. I'm willing to go out on a limb on it and say yes to archaisms, yes to inverting sentences. Um, okay, you may not be appreciated so much now. But in years to come, generations to come, you're probably going to be the one who has posterity. Because, look, look at some of the greats. Look at Shulridge, uh, Coleridge, sorry, uh, Shelley, Rossetti, you know, Shakespeare. Those are the guys uh, that really are living um, today. We read them still so much. So if you can make your language sound like how they sounded, well, you know, uh, there you have it. So I think the jury is out on that, but, but I would say go for it, you know. Uh, the more purple, uh, the better. Purple prose, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Wonderful. Uh, should I rhyme? Uh, it says, uh, Sartre. <clears throat> of, of course, you know, poetry is all about rhyme. In fact, you know, is a poem even a poem if it doesn't rhyme? You know, using end rhyme we're talking about here. Um, I would say not. You know, I mean, and why wouldn't you in the English language when there's so many, so many tremendous rhymes like um, June and Moon and Matt and cat, and flat, you know, so there's just endless rhymes in the English language. So, yeah, and, and in fact, the more you can make those rhymes really obvious, so really make sure the rhythm hits it on that end rhyme at the end of the line, the stronger it's going to be. Readers really love uh, being able to sort of guess what rhyme is coming next. That's why monosyllabic rhymes are especially brilliant. So, so really, really bring that home. Um, so yes to rhyme, of course. Um, so there we are. I think we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. But uh, just to say, it's been wonderful to sort of bring uh, what a journey it's been. I, and I hope uh, my work 
has kind of changed hearts and minds, you know, particularly to those perhaps who aren't sort of, wouldn't be normal poetry readers or listening to poetry much. I hope they've been able to sort of appreciate uh, the work that goes into uh, poetry today. Um, so, yes, uh, if, if for those who may have missed uh, any... Uh, of, of, of the previous readings, you obviously they're there, so do go back and take a look at them, and, and, and I hope you enjoy and, and learn a lot. Thank you so much.